Shall we begin? Have you ever wondered what happened to paper bags? They were those wonderful vessels that grocery and retail stores would give you so you could carry more of your delightful purchases away with you. you. Today, again. our markets, streets, forests, rivers, and oceans are flooded with plastic bags made predominantly from one thin layer of polyethylene. What's wrong with that? They're thin, light, and convenient, right? Wrong! Mm. Plastic bags are thin, yes. However, they are so thin that if your purchases have any significant weight to them at all, like canned food or bottles, they just don't hold up. So you're chasing your goodies across the driveway or down the street because your bag gave in and let loose your loot. So we double bag or triple bag. Why not? They're free, right? Wrong! Mm. More and more retailers are now charging for the convenience of having something to carry your purchases in. Some stores tell you that it's a recycling fee. Others tell you the fee is to discourage the use of plastic bags. Oh what? Goodness. Discourage convenience? Perhaps you'd like to purchase one of their store-branded reusable bags for a couple of bucks. Then you have to remember to drag them around with you for your convenience? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's look at the paper bag. The paper bag was invented in 1852 by grocery clerk turned teacher Francis Wool of Pennsylvania who was looking for a better shopping experience. Oh, and it was. Why am I talking like that? I don't know. In fact, it was very convenient and caught on worldwide as the most commonly used vessel to carry a person's purchases. For that convenience, we paid nothing, absolutely nothing. It was included in the price of doing business, designed to make your shopping easier. Best of all, the paper bag was made from a renewable resource. This practice continued for over 170 years. Now, fast forward to today. We have filled our lives with plastic bags that litter our streets and pollute our sewer and water systems. Many of our world's fish and bird species are now found with indigestible plastic particles in their digestive systems. That means they consumed something that they intended to nourish themselves with. Instead, the result can be malnourishment. That translates to less healthy fishies and birdies, less healthy food. Nothing like a belly full of old polyethylene. Mmm. <clears throat> now you may ask, how long does it take for a plastic bag to biodegrade? I'm glad you asked. It can take anywhere from 20 to 2,000 years for that one bag to disappear. Aren't you glad you triple bagged now? That means, best case scenario, you could have a child and they would almost be done college by the time that bag crumbles into the earth. Worst case scenario, 80 full generations of yours will go by and your great 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 well you get the idea grandchild could still get their toe caught in your plastic bag along the beach certainly that bag was worth 10 cents now Back to the paper bag. Today, recycling facilities are readily available in many communities and paper bags can be manufactured with recycled paper. How long does it take for a paper bag to biodegrade? That's a fabulous question. It takes approximately one month for a paper bag to biodegrade. So it's possible for that loaf of pumpernickel in the back of your bread box to be around longer than that paper bag. Ew. Does anyone use bread boxes anymore? I'm getting distracted. Let's look at some facts. According to US paper and plastic plastic bag manufacturers, 1,000 polyethylene bags will cost the retailer an average of approximately 4 cents each, including shipping. That means that not only are you now paying for the entire cost of the plastic bag, the retailer is actually making a profit of up to 250%. What? Remember, for over 170 years, paper and plastic bags have been included in the price of doing business and cost you nothing. Now, even the bag itself is just another form of progressive profit. Oh. Then, intentionally masked by inflicting guilt upon the consumer for using a product that we never really asked for. Mm -hmm. The plastic bag was introduced because they cost less than the paper bag and would maximize profit. That maximized profit is now being maximized through the guilt of you, the naughty consumer, for wanting to carry more of your purchases away. Shame.
Enter Forgotten Paper Bag. The paper bag will cost 26 cents each on average in a thousand bag lot. What? Admittedly, this is substantially more than the cost of a polyethylene bag. However, it's largely due to supply and demand. Retailers simply don't buy as many paper bags and they cost more to produce. So what can we do? Demand the supply. Let's join the likes of countries like Bangladesh, Brazil, China, Italy, Mexico, South Africa, and more. When demands exist, the prices of products drop accordingly. We can have a greener footprint in this world by demanding more green products. It's time for big business to stop milking the consumer for every single red penny. Do people still use pennies anymore? I'm getting distracted. The short in this long is that we don't have to feel guilty for having bags to carry our goods home. We should, however, focus on using a better option, like the paper bag. Today's paper bag is stronger than ever and comes in many colors and sizes, even with fancy handles. So when you're at your local retailer, don't ask why you're paying for plastic bags. Tell them you want paper bags and you don't want to have to pay for the convenience. It's simply good business.